Welcome back to AM Northwest. You know, 93% of our communication is nonverbal, which means that only 7% is what you say. Here to share how to effectively use your body language to advance your career, we welcome back career strategist and personal brand expert, Dr. Carol Parker Walsh. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. You know, when I was thinking about this segment, I thought, you know, one of the things that stands out to me is I don't think we as individuals know what it is we're giving away non-verbally. Other people no. can tell us, right? Other people can say, yes. this is what you do, but you don't really know. So you have to That's become more conscious of what you do. Yes, that's exactly right. In fact, you know, there's been several like studies and experiments where people are in a room and there's an observer and when they come out and give them feedback around, you know, what, you know, what they what the person who was in the room speaking and the perception that people outside the room had had of them were often completely different. Oh, wow. Because what, you know, realize is that your presence, um, your vibe, you know, and all of those things that you do unconsciously are picking up or people are seeing that and taking that in much more than what's coming out of your mouth. It includes your image, it includes what you're wearing, it includes how you're moving, your tone of voice and how you move your hands, right? And even now you can probably see like, I talk with my hands. Yeah. And so, some, and I don't even realize I do it most of the times until I look at it and I'm thinking, oh, okay. Or maybe I do something with my eyebrows or, you know, I make a funny look. You know, people always tell me my nonverbal speak volumes uh -huh. because I'm not the type of person that can hide what I'm thinking or feeling and that's a huge thing I often tell people it's a great idea if you're going to do an interview if you're going to do a presentation if you're going to be in front of other people to videotape yourself or have somebody watch you and give you feedback because you don't know if you have a certain tick or if you fidget or I, I remember someone who would rub their fingers in a meeting and all I could think about was why is she rubbing her finger <laughs> right I don't I didn't hear anything that she said yeah. or if people have a tick yeah. or um, you know they raise their brows or anything of that nature or if they yeah fidget or move around a lot sometimes we just don't know what we're doing and so in order to get that feedback to understand how we're showing up non-verbally I always recommend just have somebody watch you for a moment sure. or give you some feedback if somebody has been watching you or videotape yourself and see it back you'll be shocked okay. by what you see yeah that makes sense <laughs> um when it comes to your job and your career and we're talking about non-verbals you say that mindset what you've got in your mind matters it completely matters. You know, you cannot have a mindset where you're fearful, where you have self-doubt, where you're angry, and expect to come across as someone who is confident, who's calm, and who's sure-footed, right? And so what's going on up here is going to always be reflected out in terms of your nonverbals. So if you have if you don't believe that you deserve to be in the room, if you don't believe that you deserve that promotion, if you don't believe that from a career perspective that anything that's going on, particularly like suffering from imposter syndrome or things of that nature, you may not realize that all of that stuff going on, those tapes playing in your mind actually show up because you won't show up as powerfully, as confidently. Um, you'll question yourself. You won't speak up in meetings, right? You'll stay quiet. Or if you do speak up, it'll be really kind of muted or yeah. quiet or timid as opposed to really strong and forceful and really communicating what it is that you really want to communicate so people don't realize like you have to clean out what's up here so that you're really reflecting and projecting and communicating the message that you want to send across about who you are right. your competence your intelligence and, and your confidence to be able to get the job done and you say you've got to be present engaged yes right you know Honestly, I always tell people, whether you're presenting, interviewing, or whatever the case is, it's really a conversation. So get out of your head. You know, they're probably just as nervous and anxious <laughs> as you are, right? Because when we're tense or we're anxious, we tense up, and all we can think about is what we have to say next, and we're not listening to what the person is actually telling us. So we may be missing vital information that would be necessary for us to be able to have a real um, dialogue and communication so really just calm down remember it's a conversation and be present meaning listen to what they're saying and stop being worried about the next thing that's coming out of your mouth right stop being so filled with anxiety around getting it right or remembering what you're gonna say that you can't just be present and let what naturally you already know is there yeah. flow out of your mouth because if you're not present you're gonna not hear what they say 
yeah, you're going to miss vital information. Yeah. And if you're in, if you're in a big meeting and you're trying to land a deal or you're trying to close a deal or you're trying to communicate, you know, your value, or maybe you're interviewing and the interviewer asks you a question that's really vital to uh, information that they need to know to know whether or not they want to bring you on. And all you can think about is the questions that you memorize, the answers that you memorize, and you're filing through your mind thinking, how can you answer with one of your practiced or um, um, answers that you remembered before? You may not answer that question correctly because they may have asked it in a different way. They may be looking for different information. Um, you know, a great example, I was working with a client the other day, and um, she was worried about an interview question that was sent to her in advance about about, you know, what does diversity and inclusion mean to you, for mm -hmm. an, for example? And so she asked me for some help in terms of responding to the question. And I said, well, tell me what you are hearing and what you're thinking. And she immediately went to, you know, work that she did in Thailand, you know, projects that she worked on to bring in wells, to bring water into communities and things of that nature. But I said, look at the question. It asked you, what does it mean to you? Yeah. It didn't ask you, what are the things that you've done? So sometimes we really, if we're not present and listening and really thinking Thinking right. about what question is coming your way, you may give the wrong information or yeah. information that doesn't really answer the question. Abs yeah. So you miss out on a lot of things. Oh my gosh, Dr. Carol Parker Walsh, you're the best. Thank you. We want to tell everyone we'll put more information on our website. Uh, but Carol, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right.